Good morning, everyone. On behalf of the Deerfield Memorial Day Committee, I welcome you to our program entitled Deerfield Remembers. On this Memorial Day, we join with millions of Americans across the nation to honor our war dead. On this day, originally known as Decoration Day, families of veterans who had died in the Civil War placed flowers on the graves of those who had made the ultimate sacrifice. In the weeks leading up to Memorial Day in Deerfield, several groups and individuals have likewise been involved in preparation of our cemeteries and streets for this day. The VFW 3295 was accompanied by 30 students from the Frontier Regional National Honor Society and placed flags on veterans' graves in the three major town cemeteries. At that time, they learned about U.S. Army Trooper William Smith, who served in one of the three companies under General George Armstrong Custer in the 1800s. Deerfield Academy students assisted the VFW and flagged the veteran graves on Laurel Hill Cemetery, where they located the grave of Army Sergeant Gregory Belanger, who was killed in action in Iraq. They also located the monument stone of U.S. Marine Corps Second Lieutenant Thomas Ashley, who served in World War I and never made it home. The students decorated signs of veterans that were killed in action, including those of Allen and Thomas Johnson, two brothers who piloted B-17s in Europe during World War II. They were killed five days apart and never returned home. The Frontier Regional Baseball Team decorated several signs and learned about veterans, including Army Sergeant Benny Marchikaitis, whose sign is over here to the left. He fought in the Battle of the Bows in World War II and never returned home. Also noted was the sign of Army Sergeant Charles Jastramski, who served in France in World War II and was awarded the Distinguished Service Cross for saving the life of his commanding officer while sacrificing his own. And as a side note, the, the DSC is second most only to the Medal of Honor. VFW Chaplain Frank Petey decorated several signs, one of which was his uncle's Army Private First Class William Petey, who served in World War II. Chase and Colton Byshewski and their mother Gretchen accompanied me a couple weeks ago and placed flags on the town common here. The boys learned about veterans, flags, Memorial Day, and they located the name of their great-grandfather who had served in the Army in Korea. At this time, before we begin our formal program, I have a couple of notes and introductions. Uh, during COVID-19, our committee lost a member. Lucy Melnick was a long-standing member of the uh, Deerfield Memorial Day Committee, and she will be missed. Today's marshal is uh, Colonel John Pachorek of the U.S. Army, retired. Uh, we welcome the VFW post number 3295, led by Commander Ray Belisle. Thank you very much, and thank you to our veterans for their service. The Deerfield Select Board is represented by Chairman Trevor McDaniel and Tim Hilchey, who is newly elected. Congratulations on your electing, Tim. Members of the clergy here with us today include Father Robert Korber of Holy Name of Jesus Church. He'll be saying our final blessing. We have Deacon Jack Cooper of the First Congregational Church of Waitley. He's a member of the former First Congregational Church here in South Deerfield. From Holy Family Church, we have uh, Deacon Rod Patton, who will join us at St. Stan's Cemetery. And we have Father Jonathan Reardon. Father Reardon has been in Deerfield for seven years, and he has a new assignment in Springfield. He'll be leaving after today. And we thank him for his time spent in town and wish him well on his new assignment. At this point, we'll ask you to please stand, and uh, Father Reardon will offer the invocation. And please remain standing for the national anthem. Thank you. My dear friends, we gather on this day, Memorial Day, to honor those who laid down their lives for our nation and for the values that we espouse, freedom, justice, peace, and a better world for our children and our families. 
In a day often filled with the gathering of family and friends, may we take some time to bow our heads in recognition and intercede for those who have laid down their lives, for those who serve to protect us still to this day. We pray. O God, by whose mercy the faithful departed find rest in you, look kindly upon those our friends and family members who have offered their lives in defense of our freedoms and our country and the values we espouse. They departed this world in service of a greater good. We ask that you grant them eternal life in your kingdom. Amen. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there Oh, say does thy star-spangled banner yet wave O'er oh, the land of the free And the home of the Thank you, that was Miss Lisa Woods. Thank you very much. We'll now have the presentation of the memorial wreath. Colonel John Pachorik and Kathy Belandra, our Gold Star Mother, will now present the memorial wreath. Thank you. Please feel free to be seated. We'll now have uh, two Deerfield Elementary students, Elsa Brown and Nora Sloan, recite the Gettysburg Address. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived of liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation, so conceived and so dedicated, can long endure. We are met on the great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of it as the final resting place to those who gave their lives so that the nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate. We cannot consecrate. We cannot hollow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it, far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but will never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living, rather, to be dedicated to the unfinished work of which those who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be, dedi to be dedicated to the great task remaining before us that from these on our ched we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion. That we highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain. That this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom. That this government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall, shall not perish from the earth. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Well done. We now invite Mary Lipinski Wolfram to sing the Battle Hymn of the Republic. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He has loosed the faithful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. In the beauty of the lilies, Christ was born across the sea. With a glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me. As he died to make men holy, let us die to make men free. While God is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. During COVID-19, the VFW number 3295 marked the passing of one of its fondest members, Faye Bardwell, a U.S. Navy Petty Officer Second Class who had served in the Pacific Theater during World War II. He is best remembered for the poems that he had memorized and recited here. In his honor today, the VFW has representing it, its former past commander and U.S. Air Force veteran, uh, Miss Rachel Otto, who will uh, offer a poem. Rachel. Hello, everyone, and thank you again for having us here. As uh, On behalf of the VFW, it's great to see all of your faces. The past two years have been a little lonely for us as we've been rendering honors. So before I do my best to make Faye proud, because while he could recite these poems from memory, I am not that good yet, um, I would like to make sure that every one of you takes a moment to really understand what today is about. It's not about us that are here in front of you, although we are the visual representation of those that have fallen. Today is about the honor and the sacrifice of those that didn't make it home. So I would please, I know John will invite you all as well, but on behalf of the VFW and our honor guard, I would like to invite all of you to please fall in line with us as we go to render honors in the cemeteries here in Deerfield. Uh, please fall in line behind the colors. As we all know and respect, there is no one person who is above the honor and the sacrifice that men and women died, and those colors represent their sacrifice today. Thank you. Uh, America for me is the first one I was given for today. Tis fine to see the old world and travel up and down among the famous places, cities of renown, to admire crumbled castles and statues and kings, but now I think I've had enough of antiquated things. So it's home again and home again, America for me. My heart is turning home again where I long to be. In the end of youth and freedom beyond the ocean bars, where the air is full of sunlight 
and the flag is full of stars. Oh, London is a man's town. There's power in the air. And Paris is a woman's town with flowers in her hair. And it's sweet to dream of Venice and, to, and great to study Rome. But when it comes to living, there's no place like home. I like the German fir woods and green battalions drilled. I like the gardens of Versailles with flashing fountains filled. But oh, to take your hand, my dear, and ramble for a day in the friendly western woodland where nature has her sway. I know that Europe's wonderful and yet seems to lack. The past is too much with her and the people looking back. But the glory of the present to make the future free. We love our land for what she is and what she is to be. Oh, it's home again and home again, America for me. I want a ship that's westward bound to plow the rolling sea, to be blessed land of room enough beyond the ocean bars where the air is full of sunlight and the flag is full of stars. The second one I was given to read today is another of Faye's favorites. And I can't help think of a more fitting poem for Memorial Day. Freedom isn't free. I watched the flag pass by one day. It fluttered in the breeze. A young soldier saluted it, and then he stood at ease. I looked at him in uniform, so young, so tall, so proud. With hair cut square and eyes alert, he'd stand out in any crowd. I thought of how many men like him had fallen through the years, how many died on foreign soil, how many mothers' tears. How many pilots' planes shot down? How many foxholes were soldiers' graves? No, freedom isn't free. I heard the sound of taps one night when everything was still. I listened to the bugler play and I felt a sudden chill. I wondered how many times that taps had meant amen when a flag had draped a coffin of a brother or a friend I thought of all the children, of mothers and the wives, of fa fathers, sons, and husbands with interrupted lives. I thought about the graveyard at the bottom of the sea, of unmarked graves in Arlington. No freedom isn't free. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. I'd like to welcome home Mr. Doug Tierney. Uh, he's the former chairman of the Deerfield Memorial Day Committee as well as the former elementary school principal at Deerfield Elementary. Doug. Good morning. You know, on a beautiful day like today, I want to compliment all of you for being here to hold the tradition that goes on in small communities across this country to honor those who made a supreme sacrifice so that we could enjoy this life. John asked if I would go and, and uh, introduce Kathy Belanger, and I am extremely honored to do that and to be here with all of you. Um, I'll give you a phrase in a minute that Betty lived by that she taught John and I and it's the reason why this is so important, not just to us, but I'm sure to many of you. So on this day of remembrance, Deerfield, like thousands of towns across the country, gathers in town commons, public squares, arenas, wherever, to honor and to recognize those who sacrificed their lives for our freedom. That's Memorial Day, a special holiday. Many here will remember Betty Hollingsworth. She was a strong member who not only supported military personnel and was instrumental in many things. Her signatures are here, those flags. She was instrumental with the KIA signs. She was an anchor for John and myself and those who served on the Memorial Committee. She knew that how important it was to honor those who sacrificed their life. 
She told us a story early on when this committee was being formed. And the story went like this. I was a young child living down the street, down here. And my brother was serving in World War II. And I was at home. Suddenly, a black car pulled up to our house. And out stepped two military personnel in full uniform. And she said, my heart fell. I was scared. I knew something good was not about to happen. So in Betty's story to John and I, it was, I ran to the back of the house, stood there, and as they knocked on the door, I would not answer. I did not want to know that something tragic happened to my brother. So she told John and I, as we were doing work, when we started doing the KIA signs, she said, I'll pay for all of them. I said, Betty, you don't have to do this. This is Deerfield. This town supports veterans and those who made a supreme sacrifice. And that was true. But she told us something that has stood with me well, probably for 20 years now. And it was this. She said, John, Doug, for me, it's personal. Four strong words. And this drove Betty so much that whatever she did was or inspired by those words. And her, her drive and her inspiration encouraged us all. And I would say to you today, if you are here today, if you are here to remember those who served, whether we knew them or not, as long as we remember, their sacrifice was not in vain. So, uh, my pleasure is to introduce Kathy Belanger. And for over 30 years I have known Kathy, first as a parent, uh, when I was a principal at the school and she was a parent, and then as a volunteer in the community, uh, as a nurse, I knew when she had the call and she came to the school and we needed it, I had nothing to worry about. And an EMT. Kathy's world changed to its personal to me. On August 27, 2000, when she got word that her son, Sergeant Gregory A. Belanger, was killed in Iraq by an IED. Thus, Kathy became a gold star mother. And yes, there are gold star families. These are titles people just don't want to have. So each year, Kathy steps forward. We ask her to speak with us today to punch. And she gives us these great points to ponder. About this day, about this ceremony, about these names, about those who serve our country and keep us free. Her comments aptly reflect those feelings and that pain of thousands of Gold Star mothers and families as they endure the pain across our United States. Like Betty Hollingsworth, Kathy Belanger also inspires by her words and by her deeds. So it's my pleasure to introduce and ask to come to the podium Gold Star Mother Kathy Belanger. Oh, good morning, everyone. My first thing I want to say is I apologize for being late, but I had the most marvelous surprise. Greg's battle buddy, Sean Metz, showed up on my doorstep this morning. For those of you that served, there may have been one particular man or a group of men that you hung with. They were your comrade in arms. They were your, your stronghold. They were your connection to home. And you both knew you were in it together and that you would have each other's backs. 
I went to let the cat out, my little yellow Petey, and all of a sudden he froze with fear. And I thought, oh, that's weird. And he turned around quickly and he dashed back in the house. And I went to close my French door because it was time to come here. And there he is walking up on my deck with his very pregnant wife. <laughs> and I, I, my mouth just dropped. But Sean is crying. This is Sean. This is a young man that came home when I heard of Greg's death. They said, is there anyone you want to come? And I said, I want Sean to come home and be here with Greg. And he came, he did the, that long flight from Iraq, came home in his fatigues, he came to my house he talked a little bit, and he literally crashed in my recliner. He, he was gone. He was dead to the world. And having him there, breathing, sleeping in my family room, it was my connection to Greg. It was his battle buddy. He was there for all of the services. And I needed him as much as he needed me. And then the hard realization came to me, oh my God, he has to go back. I actually asked one of my EMT peers, will you help me break his legs? Then I can keep him home. I got very crazy in my head, but that's very understandable. Um, now I'm crying. I, he's had a long 19 years this year. It's been 19 years since Greg's death. Next year, it's a lifetime. It's 20. And he's had a hard road coming to grips with losing his battle buddy. And even today, he was weeping. And I said, it's okay. It's okay to have tears. I said, but they're happy tears. He left you with such wonderful memories. So that is why I am late. I apologize. I apologize. I want to also thank you for coming today. Um, I was really saddened that we didn't have a parade and I had the opportunity yesterday for the first time ever of going to Hadley. I was quite impressed. We had farm tractors and we had muscle cars and we had our veterans and we had a band and it felt the way I'm used to it. But this is good. You are the true people that understand what this holiday is to us. So I thank you for taking time out this morning on this absolutely gorgeous Memorial Day. It's been two years since I have spoken. We were in the grips of COVID and I actually wrote a posting this morning on Facebook. I feel like it's the first time I'm speaking because I have so much to say, but then I have friends will say, Kath, you have a wonderful gift of gab. In past years, I've talked to you about colors. I've talked to you about memorial pages. Um, I've talked to you about what is necessary for a proper Memorial Day. Well, I'm not going to lecture you because I really do think you know what you're supposed to do. It's okay that it's a three-day weekend. God only knows we all work so very hard. And even now, with how things are going in our world, we are all working a lot harder for many different reasons. What I want you to do today is when you go to the cemetery, stand for a moment in front of a veteran's grave that maybe you don't know or maybe someone you do know and say thank you. 
because we would not be sitting here today and having this wonderful Memorial Day if it wasn't for the men and women who stood up and paid the ultimate sacrifice. I mean, let's be honest. When a military person signs up, they know that there is that chance with duty, honor, and country that they possibly could be giving their life. I want you today, when you go to your family barbecue, if you have a brewski, because I can tell you if Greg were here, he'd be having his beer. I want you to raise your mug, your can, your wine glass, and say thank you for my freedom. That would honor him today. The one thing that I also, back when, when it came on, that I could not listen to because it, it always brought such deep emotions within me was Lee Greenwood's song, God Bless the USA. I'm gonna read a couple of the lyrics. I thank my lucky stars to be living here today cause the flag still stands for freedom and they can't take that away. And I'm proud to be an American where at least I know I'm free. And I won't forget the men who died, who gave that right to me. And I'd gladly stand up next to you and defend her here today, cause there ain't no doubt, I love this land. God bless the USA. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, Kathy. It has been our tradition here in Deerfield on Memorial Day to read the names of those who served in the military and passed away in the prior three years. Doing so today, we welcome Captain Julie Chalfont of the U.S. Navy and Specialist Linda Olszewski of the Army accompanying her to read those names. Thank you. Peter M. King, Roman E. Decision, Kenneth F. Cornoyer, Ronald A. Adamski, Chester A. Mlesko, Charles E. Upton, Lucy G. Melnick, William Henry Holden, Jr. Henry J. Zukowski. Merle G. Wilman. Jan A. Corzin. Stephen Andrew Warren. William Lewis Start. Edmund L. LaChapelle. William P. Fillaray, Samuel A. Melnick, William C. Chamora, Robert J. Gribko, Megan Burns, William P. Just. Thank you very much. In 2012, the town established the Veteran Street Sign Program, and Chairperson Betty Hollingsworth had created military biographies of the 24 known uh, killed in action veterans that had served and had been from the town. Um, the street signs were prepared, and every Memorial Day they're decorated. Uh, there are several uh, additional veterans uh, in, a, in addition to the ones that I've previously mentioned, right up the street was the home, and these signs were placed in proximity of the homes of these veterans. Up the street, we had 19-year-old Navy Seaman Second Class William Carl Muller, who was serving 
uh, and there was a special uh, operation, military operation, Exercise Tiger, World War II, one month before D-Day, and uh, over 900 lives of the Allies were lost. His uh, naval vessel was torpedoed and sunk in the English Channel. As the Navy terms it, he is still serving today on LST 289. Down the street here on Eastern Avenue, a 20-year-old Seaman Second Class U.S. Navy, John Brunkard, was serving, and his uh, vessel was also hit, destroyed, sunk in Ormoc Bay in the Philippines in World War II. His family, unfortunately, received word three months before Christmas in 1944 of his death. We also have uh, U.S. Marine Corps Private um, Walter Brzozowski, who is whose sign is located on Thayer Street. A 19-year-old who was serving in Iwo Jima, a grenade went off near him and he later died of his wounds. And at the other end of Thayer Street, we have Stanley Totsik, U.S. Army paratrooper. He was serving in World War II and he was injured on D-Day at Normandy while he was paratrooping in. And uh, he died of his wounds two days later. Now today, we're not asked to endure the path that our veterans had followed through the gas field trenches of World War I, the horrific beaches at Normandy or Iwo Jima in World War II, the frozen tundra of the chosen reservoir in the Korean conflict, the steamy jungles of Vietnam, or the hot desert of the modern day Middle East campaigns. We are, however, asked to remember them, to honor their sacrifice, and to live our lives to their fullest enjoying the freedoms that they fought and died for. At this time, we'll have representatives from the VFW number 3295 to read the names of Deerfield's 24 known veterans that were killed in action. We invite uh, Radar Men 2nd Class U.S. Navy Roger Gaucher and Petty Officer 3rd Class U.S. Navy Matt Jack Towitz to read those names. They'll be accompanied by Specialist Linda Olszewski of the Army. Good morning. Second Lieutenant Thomas W. Ashley, U.S. Marine Corps. Sergeant Gregory Belanger, U.S. Army. Seaman Second Class John Brunkard, U.S. Navy. PFC Walter J. Brzozowski, U.S. Marine Corps. Private James S. Campbell, U.S. Army. PFC James A. Childs, U.S. Army. Private Charles M. Clapp, U.S. Army. Private Raymond T. Clapp, U.S. Army. Sergeant Stephen G. Everett, U.S. Army Air Corps. Private Stanford I. Gabo, U.S. Army. PFC Ronald Giro, U.S. Army. Sergeant Archie C. Hale, U.S. Army. First Lieutenant Allen J. Johnson, U.S. Army Air Corps. Second Lieutenant Thomas W. Johnson, U.S. Army Air Corps. Sergeant Benjamin B. Machikaitis, U.S. Army. Seaman Second Class, William Carl Muller, U.S. Navy. First Sergeant Frank P. Namajewski, U.S. Army. Private First Class William S. Petey, U.S. Army. Sergeant Richard A. Scott, U.S. Army. Staff Sergeant Joseph A. Sokolowski, U.S. Army. Private 
First Class Stanley W. Kochuk, U.S. Army. Captain John Kenneth Warger, United States Air Force. Staff Sergeant Woodrow W. White, U.S. Army. Staff Sergeant Charles J. Yastramsky, U.S. Army. Cousin. Thank you. Thank you. I now ask if we can just have a moment of silence for these 24 as well as all the others who have made the ultimate sacrifice. Thank you. At this time, we welcome the VFW number 3295 rifle team and the Frontier Regional Buglers to honor our fallen heroes. Please be advised that we want to attend to young children and pets as the rifles will be loud. Please stand. At this time, we now welcome Lisa Woods to sing God Bless America. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans white with foam. God bless America, my home sweet home. God bless America. My home, sweet home, God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From 
from the mountains to the prairies to the oceans white with foam god bless america my home sweet home god bless america my home sweet home thank you lisa at this time i invite Reverend Robert Korber to offer our final blessing. It was written that greater love hath no man than this, than that a man may down, lay down his life for his friends with that in mind, let us bow our heads and pray. Almighty and eternal Father, as we gather here today on this Memorial Day, we would seek your blessings to rest upon all of us. We pray this day for all our departed veterans who have paid the ultimate sacrifice that we might live in a land where freedom rings. They were the ones who gave the last measure of their devotion to you and to our great nation. Grant unto their souls eternal rest and perpetual light. On this Memorial Day, we pray for all the families of those faithful departed the parents, the spouses, and especially their children. Grant to all of them your abiding love and peace. Loving Father, on this day, we pray for all our wounded veterans, the strength and the courage to face daily their difficulties and hardships of both body and mind. May they know that you are ever present in their lives. O oh God, keep in your tender care all those men and women who are presently serving our nation, both here and abroad, and especially all those who are in harm's way. Protect them with your divine spirit. Watch over them that they may know the unbounded love that you have for them. For you are our creator, who out of love made each of us in your divine image. O Lord God, to you be given glory, praise, and honor. Bless our great nation, guide our leaders, and encompass all of us with your eternal presence. May your peace reign over us, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Father. This will conclude our ceremony on the common. I thank you all for your presence here today. One note is we do have uh, uh, corsages for the veterans and their spouses available here. See one of the ushers. Uh, on behalf of the Memorial Day Committee and the town, I extend best wishes for a safe and healthy Memorial Day to all of you and your families. God bless America and God bless our troops. Thank you.
it is only right and fitting on this Memorial Day that we gather at this sacred cemetery. May we offer our prayers unto God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, whose care and guidance brought our forefathers to this great land and led them through faith, courage, and self-sacrifice to build the foundations of this great democratic nation and dedicated to the rights of man. Lead us, O God, on this day as you did lead our forefathers and help us to be faithful stewards of the heritage which you have entrusted to us reverently on this Memorial Day in your divine presence as we stand on this consecrated ground we pay our tribute of respect to the memory of those who gave their lives in the service of our country and whose bodies repose at our cemetery we pray that the souls of these our heroic dead may have found perfect rest in you and received the crown of an unfading life father to you the eternal lover of souls cherish and bless them we ask that you grant unto us the living peace and hope as we think of them in this solemn hour before you O oh god we humbly acknowledge our debt to them and humbly ask you to give us the strength to go on toward the ideals for which they fought and died. Take, O oh Lord, the veil from their hearts and join all of us in one communion with all your saints in this life and in the life to come. In the name of your Son and our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray this day. Amen. Amen. Detail, Potaj Hut, Fort Arch. Ready? Aim. Fire. Aim.